Hey class, um, thought I'd check in with a video here. Um, hope all of you are doing well, family's doing okay. Um, really sad to not be going to Alaska in the short term here, um, but the whole world is turned upside down at the moment. I um, hope I can bring you at least close with some baby Alaskan brown bears there behind me. So you get a feel like you're in Alaska. Um, again, sorry uh, that that was not possible because of everything going on. In the world, um, excited to hopefully see many of you in the class next year. Uh, I've redesigned the class in such a way as you've seen, and I've talked about earlier uh, that we're not going to be uh, overlapping any content of what we would do up in Alaska. So instead, we're just kind of having you go more in depth um, in the Hudson Valley here, looking at our local social ecological system. Um, so I've just posted onto iLearn your final project prompt. Um, and for the final project, it is going to build off of what you're doing now, which is looking at a subcomponent of the Hudson Valley social ecological system, or kind of what makes up the Hudson Valley and its key pieces, what makes it a place, um, what's unique about the place, and how does the system operate uh, in the past, now, and potentially in the future. And you've been looking at just your subcomponents, and now I'm going to ask you to look at the whole system as a whole. Um, and so you're going to take uh, what everyone else has posted and you're going to read through it and synthesize it and put all those subcomponents together. Um, so you have a whole set of citations and resources um, and a whole bunch of new knowledge that you'll be learning about these different pieces of the Hudson Valley and uh, you'll be putting it into one cohesive package which is a final report um, for the final project. I want to do something that uh, was approachable for everyone to do remotely on your own time. It's not due until June 5th, which is when we'd be coming back from Alaska anyways. Um, so that if you have other classes that have a lot going on the next couple weeks, uh, you got plenty of time on this. Um, but I did want to make it available now for students that want to finish this up uh, earlier than later. Um, you can submit it at any point. Um, it is a detailed one-page prompt, so make sure to read through all pieces of it of what uh, you'll be submitting by June 5th, but I'll just go over a general overview. Uh, it's got a few steps involved. Uh, first, you're gonna read this uh, PDF um, I attached that's uh, understanding the theory of social ecological systems and how they're um, resilient, adaptive, or per perhaps transformative if that system isn't stable into the future. So it's a kind of a new way of thinking about sustainability in terms of a lot of systems may, may just not be sustainable as they is and they're going to transform into something else. Or if things we do want certain things to be sustainable, how do we manage the system in such a way that we can um, create it so that that part of the system is still there into the future. Um, so you'll read this PDF. Um, also included a reading to um, additional information on just climate change in the Northeast region. Um, there are already is components of that with the student work um, that you'll be looking at. Um, but just at some additional resources there. So it's really important you read this social ecological systems theory paper because you really need to apply that then to working on the final project. So that's the first step of the final project is doing some reading. Um, the second step is more reading, but this is much more condensed and synthesized information that's already been put together by the other students in each of the different subcomponents of the Hudson Valley um, social ecological system. So. You'll go in uh, once I get everyone's pieces uh, after this weekend. Uh, so sometime next week, I'll have a resources file uh, up on iLearn. Um, so it'll be in the resources tab on our course page. Um, and there you'll see everyone else's um, presentations or essentially handouts and then what they would say with those typed up, um, either attached to the handout or some people um, are not finding it as easy to do the comment bubbles just for like the formatting and stuff. So they're either attaching a separate page or putting it underneath or however you want to do it, but clearly have your like information and then have somehow have your, the parts that you were going to say attached um, into there in some way. Um, and uh, yeah, so then you're going to read everyone else's. You're going to have this theory background from um, reading the attached PDF. Um, and then once you've done all that, then you're going to start synthesizing all this information and writing up your own uh, final paper uh, for the class here. And the paper is pretty involved. Um, obviously, this is a course where we're 
having to completely change what we were going to do. Um, so I don't want to make it unreasonable, but I also need to make it uh, worthy of a, um, a good a, a amount of in-depth work on your part. And you're going to have all the resources at your fingertips, providing those. You can go out and find additional resources to help you answer the prompt. Um, but the prompt is going to be um, essentially trying to use social ecological systems, um, the theory behind it to predict what uh, the future of the Hudson Valley may be and what are some of the biggest components that we can control today that might be able to uh, most influence where that future is going to go. So, um, and to understand the future, we understand where we've been in the past, how that's shaped where we are today um, and where we are today and what we can do now that might dictate where we're going to be uh, in the future, uh, particularly under a changing climate and a lot of the other social, economic and other types of um, stressors that are out there in the environment um, and in our human, uh, in, in society, in our uh, cities um, and uh, all aspects of our landscapes. So uh, read through the prompt, um, see the different pieces. There is obviously, you know, this is going to be a, a in-depth paper looking for between 12 and 15 pages, double spaced, 12 point times. Um, you're gonna make sure to address the historical context um, with special emphasis on any major events or times that led to altered resilience, adaptability, or transformability within the system. All those key terms are what um, the readings you're gonna do um, help highlight that. So kind of step one, learn what those key terms are and what they mean. Um, then you're gonna talk about current top context of where our system is today uh, in the Hudson Valley and what really defines the region, some of the prominent pieces. Um, and then you're gonna make a well-reasoned rational argument of where you think it may go into the future or possible scenarios if you want. You have to have at least one future scenario um, that is well-reasoned and, and you've given me a, a rational explanation of why you think it may be moving there. And particularly within that, what are I'm asking for at least two things um, that you could be believe could be done now that would help us uh, decide if we're going to move into that potential future or not. So, some of, what do you think are some of the biggest things that we can do uh, as a society within the Hudson Valley to be able to uh, create this future projection that um, you're looking at? So, I'm really asking you to. It is not an easy task to try to predict the future, um, uh, but. The social ecological systems theory provides a framework. It's about one of the closest things I've ever found to actually trying to do that in a more holistic way of kind of doing this complex systems thinking approach. To think about how all these different pieces um, between all the natural, human, economic, social are all fitting together. And then how those operate now, how they've shifted in the past and how that tells us about maybe where shifts are going into the future. So it's, um, there is no one right answer for this. There are definitely, you could, you know, not do a good job of rationalizing the future, not synthesizing the current information. Um, so there's ways to do poorly, but there's many different ways to do well on this in terms of what you think this could look like and how you frame the story that you want to tell, um, within this pap paper about where we've been, where we are now and, particularly where we're going in the future and what maybe it controls that most. Um, so don't feel pressure that you might not have the right answer or not. There's a lot of correct answers out there. Um, and I really want this to be an exercise in you and just critical thinking and um, complex systems analysis and like synthesis, because that's in the environmental field, that's what we're doing constantly is trying to say, okay, how is this piece that we're looking at relate to all these other pieces? Because where this piece is going into the future is really dependent on all these other things. And I'm going to give you a chance to think about this, these systems uh, as a whole. Um, so uh, look through the prompt, you can see for grading about 30% is on accuracy, just saying the right things, um, you know, essentially you have the science correct and the um, policy components that you're thinking about. 20% um, is on citations, so you're doing a good job of backing up where you're getting this information. And again, all the student work has citations, so you can build off of those. Um, and then 50% uh, is the storyline and organiz organization of the narrative, um, including all these parts I've outlined in the prompt. Um, so it's the, the like rhetorical piece. So have you done a good job of 
reading all the other information the students provided, thinking about it all together, and then making a rational argument of where, we, where you think things are possibly going in the future and what's most controlling that. Um, and yeah, um, and really in the end of the day, I just want you to think through, you know, what are, what does it look like here in the Hudson Valley today? And, and what, what are the biggest things that we can do to control where uh, the future is going and particularly the parts of the system that we want to either try to maintain or grow um, or change um, accordingly. So again, a lot of correct answers. I want you to have fun thinking through the possibilities, a lot of um, creativity uh, in this assignment, um, but there's definitely an expectation that you're gonna ground it in well-cited information um, about the system and where it is now and where it's been in the past um, as you think about where it's going into the future. So um, a lot of a lot of past information and a lot of citations will be involved in this. Um, let me know if you have additional questions. Um, and um, other than that, I think you're in a good place now uh, for the month ahead. Um, I don't want this to be uh, overly a burden on you, but I also want it to be a good synthesis activity that really hits home on what the original you know goals were of the class, even though they've unfortunately been really altered from where we were at the beginning. But I hope this is still a useful task for many of you and you learn some new skills in systems thinking um, and some of this type of complex social eco ecological systems analysis. So um, enjoy and yeah, feel free to definitely be in touch uh, as more things, uh, questions come up as you work through this and happy to help all of you. Take care folks, bye.